In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about regulation of gluconeogenesis. Now, the opposite pathway of gluconeogenesis is the glycolysis. Why both are opposite? Because in the glycolysis, glucose is converted to pyruvate and in the pathway of gluconeogenesis, pyruvate is converted to glucose. That is why both are opposite pathway. And once both are opposite pathway, there must be a reciprocal regulation should occur. Now, what is reciprocal regulation? That means whenever gluconeogenesis is stimulated, glycolysis has to be inhibited and whenever glycolysis is stimulated, gluconeogenesis must be inhibited. Now, what will happen if reciprocal regulation is not there? If it is not reciprocally regulated, then there are a chances that both of these pathway will remain stimulated. And if both pathway are stimulated, then there will be continuous conversion of pyruvate to glucose and continuous conversion of pyruvate to uh, glucose to pyruvate. So, here by this reversible pathway, there will be no any net work done. So, that is why reciprocal regulation is must. And the second aspect is that as it is a reciprocal regulation, we cannot discuss regulation of gluconeogenesis without touching regulation of glycolysis and vice versa. We cannot discuss regulation of glycolysis without touching regulation of gluconeogenesis. So, for that, I had already prepared one video on the regulation of glycolysis. The link of that video is given in the description of this video as well as in the i button of the upper right corner of this video. In the regulation of glycolysis, I had talked about the several point of the regulation of gluconeogenesis. Okay? So, here let us start our regulation of gluconeogenesis. See, in this pathway, this is a actually a multiple pathway. Here you can see glucose is getting converted to pyruvate. So, that is the glycolysis and simultaneously pyruvate is also getting converted to glucose that is the pathway of gluconeogenesis. The irreversible reaction of the glycolysis, it is shown by this red arrows and this irreversible steps of glycolysis, they are reversed by some alternate enzyme system in the gluconeogenesis and these particular steps are shown by this blue arrows over here and over here also. Okay. Along with this pathway of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, I had also shown this link reaction that converts pyruvate to the acetyl coenzyme A. And this along with this link reaction, I had also shown the minor portion of the TCA cycle. So, now let us understand that when we discussed about the regulation of glycolysis, glycolysis is regulated at three important point. One point is over here, second point is over here at the phosphofructokinase one and third point is at the pyruvate kinase. In the regulation of gluconeogenesis is also occurring at three same step of the glycolysis. See, uh, gluconeogenesis is regulated at this glucose 6 phosphatase level, at this fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase level and as this last step that is pyruvate kinase, it is reversed by two step. So, we have here two point of regulation that is pyruvate carboxylase and phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. So, let us write down the corresponding steps where regulation occurs for the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. So, glycolysis regulation occurs at three point. One is hexokinase or glucokinase, second one is phosphofructokinase 1 and third one is pyruvate kinase. Whereas, the gluconeogenesis, it is regulated at this same three point. The corresponding step of hexokinase and glucokinase is glucose 6 phosphatase. The corresponding step of phosphofructokinase 1 is fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase and corresponding step of pyruvate kinase. Here we have two steps. One is pyruvate carboxylase, pyruvate carboxylase and second one is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. Now, let us see how they are regulated. In my previous video of the regulation of glycolysis, I had already discussed about all these three steps and along with that, I had also discussed in detail about the regulation of this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Let us just simply refresh our memory. See, phosphofructokinase 1, it is allosterically inhibited by ATP and citrate, whereas it is allosterically stimulated by three molecules. One is ADP, then AMP and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. This AMP and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate both are inhibitory, allosterically inhibitor of fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. 
Now, in, in addition to this, what happens whenever we are in the fasting state, at that time there is a decreased blood glucose concentration. And because of decreased blood glucose concentration, pancreatic alpha cell, they secrete one hormone that is glucagon. This glucagon, it will increase the cyclic MP production. Now, this increase cyclic MP production, it will lead to sequence of event that we had discussed in the previous video of regulation of glycolysis, that it will lead to decrease concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. See, if fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is decreased, what will happen? This enzyme, its inhibition will be gone. So, now this enzyme will able to work and so gluconeogenesis will occur and this gluconeogenesis, it will carry out increased blood glucose. So, over here, decreased blood glucose it had counteracted by this increased blood glucose. The second important aspect is that, that this increased cyclic AMP, it will stimulate protein kinase enzyme, protein kinase enzyme and this protein kinase enzyme, it will do a phosphorylation, phosphorylation of pyruvate kinase isoenzyme which is present in the liver. Remember, this protein kinase, it cannot carry out phosphorylation of all the isoenzymes of pyruvate kinase. It will specifically do phosphorylation of the pyruvate kinase isoenzyme which is specific for the liver. And once pyruvate kinase is phosphorylated, it becomes inactive. So, now as pyruvate kinase is inactive, glycolysis will be inhibited and so glucose utilization will decrease. It will again help in this low blood glucose level, right. This cyclic MP, it has third effect also. What it will do? This increased cyclic MP, it will activate or stimulate one more protein which is called as a crave protein. This crave is abbreviated for cyclic MP response element binding protein. Once again, cyclic MP response element binding protein. Now, this crave protein, it is nothing but the transcription factor. It is a transcription factor for the gene encoding this phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. And as this transcription factor is now available, it will lead to increased synthesis of phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. And this is one of the important enzyme of gluconeogenesis. So, again by this, there will be increased blood glucose concentration. So, see over here that decreased blood glucose, it is leading to multiple events and all event converse on this single point by which blood glucose concentration will now increase. So, this is so important for regulation of blood glucose concentration. Now, let us see how pyruvate carboxylase is regulated. It is one unique and one very interesting aspect. This is the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme. It converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate. Now, pyruvate, this is the mitochondria. Pyruvate inside the mitochondria, it has two important fate. One is it can be either converted to oxaloacetate or it can be converted to acetyl coenzyme A. Now, this pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A conversion is carried out by this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Here, the acetyl coenzyme A is very important molecule. Why? Because acetyl coenzyme A, it allosterically inhibit this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and it allosterically stimulate this pyruvate carboxylase enzyme. Now, what is the significance of this inhibition of this and stimulation of this enzyme? The reason is whenever we are in the fasting state, whenever we are in the fasting state, at that time, there is an increased triacylglycerol hydrolysis. Now, how fasting state, it leads to increased triacylglycerol hydrolysis, that is the point of discussion for another video that I will cover in the lipid metabolism. And along with the fasting, of course, there is a decreased blood glucose concentration. Now, once this triacylglycerol hydrolysis is increased, it will lead to breaking down of triacylglycerol into glycerol and fatty acid. So, there will be more and more fatty acid coming to the blood. This fatty acid, it will undergo beta oxidation and it will release acetyl coenzyme A. So, fatty acid gets broken down to acetyl coenzyme A and the concentration of acetyl coenzyme A will increase drastically. So, this increased acetyl coenzyme A over here, it inhibits this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Thereby, there will be accumulation of this pyruvate. So, once this pyruvate gets accumulated, what will happen? 
this glycolysis glucose will now not able to get converted to the pyruvate why because its end product is accumulated so glycolysis will be indirectly inhibited and along with that what will happen this acetyl coenzyme a it is also stimulating pyruvate carboxylase so thereby this increased pyruvate in the mitochondria it will be now converted to oxaloacetate and oxaloacetate in turn will be converted to phosphoenol pyruvate and phosphoenol pyruvate is one of the important substrate for the gluconeogenesis so this ultimately leads to increase gluconeogenesis and by increased gluconeogenesis our blood glucose concentration increase so again this mechanism is also maintaining is maintaining glycolysis and gluconeogenesis in such a way that blood glucose is constantly maintained here pyruvate carboxylase it is also carrying out second function see here acetyl coenzyme a is increased and simultaneously pyruvate carboxylase is also active so there is more and more oxaloacetate so this more oxaloacetate is available to this increased acetyl coenzyme a so it will this oxaloacetate it will invite acetyl coenzyme a into the tca cycle and this will be by the tca cycle it will be ultimately converted to carbon dioxide and energy will be released right so in the low blood glucose concentration this entire sequence of event it is ensuring that fat will be now utilized as a source of energy and whatever available material is there that will be utilized for the synthesis of glucose this is such a nice and such a impressive phenomena right so i hope that everything every concept of this regulation of gluconeogenesis is clear if you have any doubt or confusion or question please write it down in the comment section below thank you